Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In a fighter jet, its engines remain the linchpin of all sorts of operations. A degraded engine could make an indomitable fighter a sitting duck. That said, the US Air Force goes above and beyond when keeping their engines in prime condition. In this pursuit, testing them while fixed to the fighter remains an effective and essential method. But running these monstrously powerful engines on the ground requires some bizarre yet innovative techniques. The requirement to test an engine may arise at any given time. While all the air bases do not have the capability to test engines, a makeshift solution would be the ultimate panacea. The US Air Force invented the expedient trim pad anchoring system, a swift and reliable method for conducting engine run-ups. With the use of expedient trim pads, fighters are put to the test while resting on an existing runway. The anchor system has a restraining cable laid across the runway and is connected to two anchor groups on either side. An anchor group is a collection of individual anchor stakes. Usually, an anchor group has 12 stakes anchored in a triangular shape and connected to a triple turnbuckle fitting. The stakes are driven by a hydraulic breaker and are spaced evenly with the tie spacers. The tail hook is engaged to the cable during the run-up, as the cable holds the aircraft in place. After installing the anchor group, its ability to handle the loads should be monitored. That could be done by measuring the movement of the anchor stakes. A string line placed across a reference anchor stake can indicate the movement of the stakes after a certain number of run-up operations. Usually, the anchor groups are inspected for integrity and movement after every 20 operations. The restraining cable length and the spacing between anchors are selected to match the thrust loads. Usually, an engine is taken through the full spectrum of thrust during an engine run-up. A wet run is conducted with the afterburners and the behavior of the other aircraft systems is also checked. Apart from the scheduled run-ups, technicians may want to run the engine for troubleshooting purposes. The vibration sensors of the engine monitoring system continuously monitor the engine vibration to detect higher than normal levels. In addition to the static ground runs, Engineers take it to the hush house when a fighter jet engine needs a thorough look. A hush house facility can be used for both installed and uninstalled engine testing. While engine manufacturers use the hush house for initial testing of an engine, existing engines visit the hush house for intermediate level maintenance and troubleshooting. In F-16 turbofan engines, a ground instrument named the Comprehensive Engine Diagnostic Set is used as the interface to collect data. It communicates with the engine components, such as the engine diagnostic unit and the digital electronic engine control, to record vital parameters. In addition, it records the fault codes initiated by the electronic engine control and provides in-depth details for troubleshooting purposes. Tesla is basically the last line of quality assurance between an engine that might fail out on the flight line and cause damage to the jet or risk mission or pilot's life 
and a perfectly running engine. It's test cell's job to be able to run the engine through every single possible existing parameter to make sure it's working exactly as it's supposed to. Regardless of the high integrity of the aircraft engines, there remains a non-negligible possibility of a sudden, unforeseen failure. On such occasions, fighters may have to land at the nearest airbase. On the other hand, if the runway is damaged during a battle, the entire runway may not be available for the pilots. This is where mobile aircraft arresting systems like the BAC-12 come into play. The BAC-12, or Barrier Arresting Kit 12, is a bi-directional multiple disc rotary friction type energy absorber. It can be permanently located or fixed atop a mobile carrier and used as a mobile arresting system. Like a usual cross-deck pendant laid across the carrier deck, the cable of the arresting system is stretched across the runway, having two identical back 12 arresting systems at the two ends. When the aircraft lands and the tail hook catches the cable, the back 12 system pays out the cable under controlled friction. The kinetic energy of the moving aircraft is transferred to the arresting system and then converted to mechanical energy as the reel pays off. In addition to the mechanical energy, a significant amount of energy is dissipated as heat as well. The mobile back 12 system can be installed on soil, asphalt, and concrete. The trailer that carries the arresting system is anchored to the ground via its anchor points. Just like the reliable safety mechanism of the back 12 on compromised runways, pilot training for operations on contaminated runways remains a staple for mission readiness. The U.S. Air Force tested their F-35A multi-role fighters in icy conditions and proved the ability of the fighters to operate in icy conditions. They operated the fighter in sub-zero temperatures with a runway condition reading, or RCR, of 7. It indicates the friction coefficient between the runway surface and the aircraft tires. A higher RCR number indicates a dry runway, hence better friction. Initially, the F-35A was approved to land at an RCR of 12. The test team executed a comprehensive range of tests, ranging from taxi, takeoff, and landing, and claimed the capability to operate at an RCR 7 runway. In addition to the icy runway operational tests, the team conducted drag chute deployment tests as well. While none of the F-35 fighters came with a drag chute, Norwegian F-35A fighters were required to have a drag chute fitted to them. The unique operational and environmental conditions in Norway necessitate having a drag chute fitted to its fighters for safe operations on wet and icy runways. The Drogue parachute was retrofitted to an aerodynamic pod positioned between the two vertical stabilizers. The pod was designed to keep the initial radar cross-section unharmed, thus maintaining the stealth of the fighter. The chute is made of Kevlar and can be released from the pod with a push of a button from the cockpit. Upon decelerating, the same button is used to detach the chute from the fighter. Akin to the F-35A parachute, the B-52 Stratofortress uses a parachute for the same reason. Unlike fighters, a bomber like the B-52 is extremely heavy, and stopping one upon landing is exacting. 
This becomes more challenging if the runway is slippery. To cater to such scenarios, the B-52 is equipped with a drogue parachute to decelerate the aircraft upon landing. The parachute is stored in a caudal compartment and releases at 170 knots. Initially, the white-colored pilot chute deploys, pulling the colossal 44-foot diameter drogue parachute out. The ribbon parachute used in the B-52 can be used for more than 50 landings. While the aircraft and associated equipment continue to evolve, improving safety and mission readiness, their counterparts on the ground, which is the runway, deserve a pat on the back for their silent service. The condition of the runways plays a pivotal role in successful aircraft operations. With that said, tests are conducted to evaluate the change in runway conditions over time. While waiting decades for real-world data is fruitless, the U.S. Army Corps Engineering and Development Center developed a machine that could demonstrate 20 years of traffic in just a couple of months. It is the Heavy Vehicle Load Simulator Aircraft System. This system pulls a wheel back and forth from one side to another, simulating aircraft movement. The system can exert a maximum load of 100,000 pounds and keep going for 23 hours daily. The team has initiated a test of the AM2 airfield mats, demonstrating the movement of a P-8 Poseidon aircraft. The interlocking structure of these mats makes the installation super easy. Thus, Airmen can establish a functional runway using mats in a matter of hours. The motive behind the testing is to gain a better understanding of when an airfield will fail and require renovations. This helps to take proactive measures and maintain mission readiness. One of the crucial characteristics of a runway is its friction. A change in friction has numerous implications for aircraft operations. Knowing the right friction value can mitigate many operational challenges. The RT-3 Continuous Friction Measuring Equipment is the newest addition to the Air Force. This equipment provides accurate data and avoids the trouble of manually calculating the frictions. With the availability of accurate data, unnecessary chemical usage can be mitigated, saving a small fortune while improving sustainability. The system, it calculates the friction of the different parts of the airfield, such as the runway and a mass parking apron, all the other taxiways and aprons, to be able to let the pilots and maintainers know how safe it is to tow or for an aircraft to take off. On a runway, one of the main reasons for the change in friction is rubber deposits. Hence, removing rubber deposits will help reinstate the friction values. The Prime Base Engineer Emergency Force, or Prime Beef Teams, are responsible for removing rubber deposits. With the use of a utility vehicle, a solvent is applied to the runway surface and then thoroughly brushed for effective cleaning. This dislodges the rubber particles from the runway surface. As a final step, a blast of fresh water removes the rubber deposits, giving the runway a fresh look. It is quite evident that the upkeep of runways is integral to maintaining the engines of the fighters. They remain like links in a chain, interdependent on one another, sharing the acclaim for bringing home each soul they lifted above and beyond. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.
See you next time.